The Australian government has set a challenging emissions reduction target for 2030 of 43% below 2005 levels. This will require Australia's heavy emitters to materially reduce their emissions, uh, which is really the key sort of focus at the moment of the safeguard mechanism, which is currently before Parliament. Joining me to discuss the implications of the mechanism changes, as well as for the carbon market for Australia, is Justin Smirk. Justin, welcome. Thank you, Elliot. It's good and to be back. It's nice to be here. <laughs> so Justin, to start with, the safeguard mechanism covers industry, which in 2020 to 2021 was responsible for about 28% of our total emissions. So quite a significant amount of emissions there, which need to be reduced if we're going to actually meet these, these uh, goals that were set in place. How is the, the mechanism set up or the changes that have been planned um, looking to actually make this happen? So first of all, it's pretty important to understand the safeguard mechanism is focused on those large emitters and it's a cap and trade type situation where there's a level of emissions um, set for each um, industry, each, um, each firm. And the firms that produce more emissions have to buy in some credits to offset them or they have to, if they produce less emissions, they can generate credits which they can then sell. What they're trying to do with the changes of the safeguard mechanism is to tighten the situation before you could argue it was, a, it was a program that was designed to help stop the growth in emissions, whereas now it's been an outright target to reduce emissions. Such as, previously, you could actually average the type of emissions you had between yourself and the, and the industry. Now, you have to use 90% of, local, of your local in, in, equal sector emissions from your firm, um, and maybe averaging with 10% from elsewhere. And then, over time, they're going to keep on continuously reducing emissions. Now, it's important to recognise there's two, two components to this sort of trading system. One, safeguard mechanism credits, which are generated by the safeguard mechanism, and they can only be traded amongst safeguard mechanism firms. There are also the Australian Carbon Credit Units, which are generated by a broader scheme, which is um, generated by a whole idea of offsetting emissions elsewhere, and those credits can be openly traded and bought, used by safeguard mechanism firms as well, or by other firms too. So there's two systems running parallel, safeguard mechanism and the ACCUs, which work together to try and limit the amount of carbon that's been emitted. And those that are emitting less than they need to can generate credits which they sell, and those that maybe need the credits buy them to offset the excess, credit, excess carbon emissions. Thanks. So it's important to also recognise that these are, we're not just sort of setting a price here, we actually are sort of creating constraints for these industries. So if you're a you know, current participant and you define a way to actually uh, pr create a new production base which is going to get you well below your baseline, you don't then just get all that additional benefit to the, your existing baseline because there's a new uh, sort of level that will be put in place for that new facility, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. So the, the, the previous system, because remembering this is not a carbon tax, it's a cap and trade system where there's a free market open for the pricing of these, of these um, units. Initially, the previous system had allowed for firms that got the benefit of all that technology they had already embedded in the system to get a large amount of credits, which they could then sell to the firms, which then had to, didn't need those credits, and it created. So basically, this new system is tightening the system and reducing the number of safeguard mechanism credits that are available to be traded. Yeah, and over time, those baselines are going to continue to move down, so there's going to be less headroom available for those. That's the very key well. key part of this whole way the mechanism works and how you reach your long-term targets by constantly reducing the amount of credit amount of um, emissions that are allowed and forcing firms to either buy more credits, which will push up the price, or actually reduce the emissions they have themselves. So we mentioned there the two different types of credits, the SMCs, Safeguard Mechanism Credits, which are going to be in this kind of their own little ecosystem, and then the ACCUs or ACCU, uh, Australian Carbon Credit Units, uh, which are obviously a broader measure. I mean, it, given the constraints on the SMCs, then obviously the demand is going to flow to the, the, the ACCU market. Um, so sort of what is the government looking, I think, or two questions, what is the government looking to do to try and, I guess, uh, manage that, that movement and sort of the increase in potentially we might, price we might see there given demand supply? in the market, um, you know, to think about the cost of these businesses, but also then you know, what are the implications for the developments in that ACU market going forward of the safeguard mechanism? So one thing the government has quite recognised is by reducing, you know, tightening the SMC market, which is reducing the supply, but of course also increasing demand because other firms that are producing, that are now um, producing credits, carbon emissions above the sort of more tighter conditions, um, does mean you're going to have push up on prices. The government has put a cap on around $75 a tonne for the SEUs to try and make sure that the market is fit within this longer term guidelines. So two things that we can know from that. One is the government is quite consciously reducing supply increasing demand and they do think it will lift prices and they've given us a target market out there. The other thing that's been lurking in the background is this ACCU market or ACCU market 
and how that sort of generates credits and what they can be used for. Um, this, as while at this point in time there's been no legislation to change the market, um, the Chubb review did actually suggest tightening the market around, the, around that use. Um, that meant sort of reducing the type of credits that could be generated, particularly around forestry, the, 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 the non-reduction or the non-logging of forests, and also around uh, landfill gas projects, which had been generating a large number of credits from projects which were quite questionable. So both situations working in tandem, just generating this idea that the market for carbon in Australia is being both tightened and generating a situation where with a, while there's a cap in one area, the ACU market is going to operate at its own level and, and be guided by a lot around the supply conditions that are set in place for it. Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. So it's, it's not just about, the, I guess, the demand rising for ACUs, but potentially the supply also then being kind of constrained or realigned, I suppose, to the kind of priorities going forward. Um, the other thing we probably should just kind of mention as well is that you know, we've got a situation where the voluntary kind of markets can't be used for, mm -hmm. for these uh, emitters as well. It's so very important. There's another market out there which is not really going to be tapped, so to speak, um, to actually sort of balance out demand supply as well, which focuses attention much more on, on the ACU uh, credits as well. Um, definitely interesting developments there. And obviously as, we, as the legislation goes through Parliament, we might get sort of a confirmation of, of these um, sort of terms and conditions, so to speak, um, and sort of a better idea as to how this will evolve over the next you know, couple of years, it's going to be 23 to 2030, really, that we see this. Um, I think there's some interesting other sort of developments which might come back to around how this might look to see us kind of uh, you know, have a relationship with, with other countries, in Europe as an example, and also, as we mentioned there, the voluntary market as well. So, so a few more sort of, sort of points to come back to in, uh, in future videos about these markets and how they're evolving. There is indeed, and I think it's important to remember that because it's a cap and trade system, it opens, it allows for, over time, for governments to make adjustments to our carbon emissions and how they manage them, and so they can adjust the supply and demand conditions by changing those rules and regulations around both the levels of emissions and both how you generate credits. Okay, great. Well, thanks for joining me, Justin Day. Uh, it's been a great chat as always. Lots to think about there. Uh, and we'll definitely be back in, in the coming months with many, many more themes around the global green transition and obviously Australian carbon markets as well. Thanks for joining us.